Hello, my name is Kimberly Woolfolk and I'm the Read 180 teacher here at Monroe Elementary School. Today, I would like to discuss with you essential question number seven, instructional technology. Monroe Elementary School is a personalized learning school, which gives us the good fortune of being able to be a one-to-one -one device school in grades four through six. Since I am a Read 180 teacher, and all of my students are either in the 5th or 6th grade, they all have a Chromebook in which I'm able to integrate technology in my classroom, and they're able to use their Chromebooks to access that technology in my classroom. So I believe that technology should not be integrated just for the sake of integrating it. Technology really needs to be integrated into the classroom in a very thoughtful and purposeful manner. And so I asked myself several questions to see if a particular tool that I want to introduce into my classroom meets different criteria. And if I can't answer yes to most of these questions, then I don't use the technology in my classroom. Some of the things that I consider when looking at a tool to integrate are, what is the proposed technology? How will it meet the needs of my students? Many of my students are two to five years behind in their reading skills. So for example, I may have a sixth grader that's reading at a first grade level. So how will the technology meet the needs of that particular student based on how I assess, assess that student and where their gaps may be? Another question that I like to think about before I integrate technology into my classroom is how will the technology address the different loading, uh, learning modalities of each of my students? So does it meet the needs of a visual learner or an auditory learner or maybe a kinesthetic learner? So how does the technology incorporate each one of those learning modalities so that all students are able to access the curriculum? In addition to that, how well does the technology help my ELD students who are not only trying to close the gap in reading, but they may still have some language barriers as well. A next question that I ask myself is how will a, the proposed technology that I'm using help my students be introduced and to develop higher order thinking skills and interact with the content at a deeper level. This is critically important for my students. Once we are able to close the gap in their reading, we need to be able to transition those Read 180 students back into their general ed classroom. And in order for those students to be successful, they need to have started to develop some strategies and skills to help them interact with content at a much deeper level. So I want my students to have exposure to software that will help them think at a higher level. So I want to try, as always, to bring in technology that will introduce and help them practice that skill. Next, is the proposed technology presented in a way that is engaging to my students? In other words, do the students not realize that they're learning what I need them to learn and that they're applying the skills that we've learned in class with the software? And so that's very important because if kids don't realize that they're learning and they're just having fun, it makes it easier to introduce them to much difficult skills and then they're able to access it through the technology and have fun because as you know if learning is fun then you help students develop the skills to be lifelong learners and that is truly important. Lastly the question that I will always ask is will the proposed technology extend learning outside of my classroom? So an example of this is maybe a reading software tool in which my students are able to access reading content outside of the classroom. So how will that help them build skills while they're at home or in the home setting? In particular, this is important because students may or may not have support at home or may have parents who are not familiar with technology. So I need to integrate a tool in which students are able to use that tool without necessarily having to have a lot of support at home. So if the technology that I'd like to integrate in my classroom can meet those criteria, then I will use them 
and introduce them to my students. Here is a list of some of the software that I use in my classroom. And what I'd like to do first is to introduce you to uh, my Haiku page. And really, Haiku is the place where I house all of the links to my technology. And it really is a repository for our learning. So. First of all, I'd like to introduce you to my Haiku page before I discuss some of the other technologies that I'm using in my room. Let's go to Haiku. So when students first get to my Haiku page, they will end up on this welcome page. And as you can see, I have a list of the classroom rules that we decided on together. I have a picture of the brain and how the brain works. At the beginning of school, we spent a lot of time talking about a growth mindset. As you can see, there's a video down here that gives them an illustration of how to be successful and how to use a growth mindset to overcome challenges that they may have with reading. And we just discuss a lot about how we can really train and reprogram our brain, our brain so that reading becomes less difficult for us as we engage in our practice of reading. So on the sidebar here, if you look to your left, I have a list of all of the uh, things that are available to my students. If they are highlighted in red, that means that page is published and our students are able to see the content on there. Uh, so if I can go to the Habits of Mind page, you will see that we practice the strategy of habits of mind within my school. And within my classroom, I always tie it back to a skill that we're learning in class. So for example, if you scroll down, you will see the habit of mind that we're learning for that month and a video of that particular habit. I want to give my students a visual um, and a video really helps for both my visual and auditory learners. It also helps for my ELD students as they have a frame of reference. And I try to find something funny and engaging so the students take the time to watch it. Uh, so, for instance, if you look here for a habit of mind for January, which is striving for accuracy, I had a picture uh, trailer of Brave and how she was striving for her target. She didn't want um, anyone to win her hand in marriage. She wanted to be able to pick her own suitor, but she had to win the challenge to be able to do that. And what we did was we tied striving for accuracy back to our skill of fluency. And so I wanted my students to understand that not only was it about how many words we could read in a minute and how fast we were reading, but it really was about being accurate. And we shouldn't sacrifice speed for accuracy. So... I wanted my students to be able to practice not only being fluent, but being accurate. So now if you look to the side here, you will also see each of the units of study. So currently we are in workshop eight. And if you look on this page here, you will see at the top that there is a link to the Read 180 software. And that's right here. So students are able to access it all the time. Uh, we will move into narrative writing here, and so you will see that there's a link to Storyboard. And so students will go here and they will sign up for that link, and so that will help them as well. And then as you scroll down on the page, you will see uh, that there is uh, the theme that we're studying, which is compare and contrast for this unit, and then some kind of visual tool for them. Uh, to look at and remind what the theme or the readings will be for that particular unit. Also, if you take a look on the right, you will see the unit vocabulary. So that is posted here as a reminder. It is also up on the board in my room. And so students are able to go here and look. And then we will teach the vocabulary from this point. But I always want the students to have a reference point. Uh, the last thing I'd like to show you, if you can uh, look here, is... Uh, the writing and the writing process. So here I have different pictures that I have integrated and a video and which talks about race and short constructed responses. I also have writing rubrics there so students are able to go and they're able to look at the rubrics and basically self-evaluate their writing against the rubrics. One other thing while we're here that I think is important that I want to show you is the parent corner. 
This is something I recently decided to add to my haiku page. I'm trying to help my students enlist the help of their parents and have more support at home. And I know many times parents uh, really don't have a lot of time to spend, so I've tried to make it easier. Uh, this page is truly a work in progress. As you can see, I have one portion here uh, that I have had translated into Spanish, if you look right here, um, for my parents. And so I will continue to have the uh, next set of um, boxes translated into Spanish as well. And my intention here is to continue to post helpful hints um, and habits that we're working on in class um, for my parents so that uh, they are also able to see what we're working on and then we can extend the learning outside of my classroom. So again, here's a list of the technology that I use in my room. Uh, as we've just taken a tour of uh, the haiku page right here, uh, hopefully you gain a better understanding of how I have my um, classroom organized online. And next what I'd like to discuss is really the uh, crux of what we're doing in my classroom, and that is the READ 180 software. So the Re180 software consists of System 44, uh, which is a software tool that is integrated in my classroom. It's really to help students close the gap in their decoding strategies and skills. And so after students have completed their session within the software, I provide them with a reading passage to help them practice those skills that they've just got completed with. Uh, in addition to the System 44 software, Read 180 has an additional piece of software uh, that is designed really to reinforce decoding strategies for the student as well as help them with comprehension skills. So each day during our rotation period, students will spend 30 minutes working in either System 44 or Read 180 depending on where they are in terms of their skill level. And then this gives them great practice uh, in our classroom. So for each of the software tools that I use in my classroom, I really try to break it up into domain specific. So for our purposes here, I've divided them up into reading strategies and writing strategies. So for the reading strategies, I use ReadWorks and Newzella, and this really helps me to differentiate instruction for my students. So I go to those two websites and I may either post an article on Haiku or I may print out the article so that students are able to use that as reading for homework. And what it allows me to do is to give the same content to all of my students, but at their particular Lexile level. And so each one of my students um, get a differentiated homework packet, and this is these are the two tools that I use for that so that the readings are aligned with their Lexile level. And then we're able to have class discussions about what we read and I am able to propose to them some higher order thinking questions uh, using Webb's depth of knowledge. And so we're really able to have great conversations and everyone can participate because everyone's read or had access to the same content. In addition, I use Read Theory in my room, and I really started using this as a way to help my students practice higher order thinking skills with their reading and to be able to explain their thinking in writing. And this tool I use in preparation uh, for their transition back to the general ed classroom. And when I discuss about how my students are using technology in my classroom, I will go into further detail about this particular website. In addition, uh, fluency and the fluency practice is a very important piece in my classroom. And so I assign 
or give to my students each week a fluency passage for homework. It's a one minute time reading that they can time themselves. And I have students recorded every other day in Google Fluency Tutor. And this is really a tool for them and for me. I have a fluency rubric in which I have them grade themselves if, as they hear the playback of the recording. It also helps me figure out, since I don't have a chance to sit down and read individually with my students every day, this is my opportunity to really hear them read and figure out uh, what problems they may encounter as they're reading. And so it really helps me uh, to deepen and change my instruction towards the needs of my students. In addition, I uh, have two tools that I use in my classroom uh, to give access to my students to reading content which is Destiny, which is our online tool in which students can look at reading material in our school library and even check those out through Destiny. And so that way they can go to the library and pick up the books that they're reading. And then Epic, which is a great online website that gives students access to hundreds of titles. Uh, many of the books uh, have AR quizzes on them, and so students are able to read the books in Epic and then take an AR quiz. Uh, and this is another site that I will touch upon when I talk about um, how students are using technology in my classroom. Lastly, of course, our school uses Accelerator Reader, and this is a great tool um, to measure comprehension and vocabulary. It's also great for me in that I can compare how students are doing in terms of their Lexile number in AR against what they're doing uh, in Read 180's SRI, which tests, which tests their Lexile level. So essentially, in Read 180, students take a scholastic reading inventory, which measures their SRI, but we're only taking that once a semester. And so what I do is I'm using the AR Lexile as a way to pinpoint how effective my instruction is. So if I am using the correct strategies and skills and if I'm helping my students apply those strategies and skills I should slowly see their Lexile level in AR raise. If it doesn't then I know that I need to make some adjustments to my teaching skills so this really helps me do that. So writing. Writing is a big component in Read 180 and so there's several pieces of software uh, that I use to help students with the mechanics of writing as well as the writing process itself. So we use Spelling and Vocabulary City to not only help my students uh, learn spelling patterns which will ultimately help them build great skills in reading but to really learn and understand their vocabulary words for the unit and then using those vocabulary words in the writing. So on Spelling Vocabulary City the students will play games and they'll get affiliated with their words. They may do some kind of sorts but this is all very interactive and engaging in a way to get them uh, to get more familiar with the spelling patterns uh, for a particular week. I also use No Red Ink in my room, and No Red Ink is a site for grammar, so this really helps my Read 180 students with English Language Convention. I will pick a lesson for that week, and students will go through that lesson. So I don't always have time to cover grammar as thoroughly as I would like in my room, so this is another way how I'm extending the learning outside of my classroom and exposing my students and having them uh, gain the skills that I need them to gain to improve uh, their grammar usage. And then finally, I use two, I have used two different writing uh, websites in my classroom. Uh, when we were doing opinion writing, I used Kid Blog as a way for students to blog about their opinions on different subjects. Um, it was a great tool. Uh, we used it for a very limited time in my classroom uh, because they only give it to you free for a limited time. And so um, I will look for other tools uh, which will allow my kids to continue to blog. They really enjoyed that and they did a lot of writing, got a lot of practice on opinion writing with that. 
This trimester, as we move into narrative writing, I'm going to use a website called Storybird. And I will explain Storybird in greater detail when I explain how students are using technology in the classroom. But this really is a great tool to help students harness their imagination and really use it as they're writing. And so I'm looking forward to uh, the level of product that I will get once they start being familiar and using Storybird on a regular basis. And so as you can see, that is how I'm using technology in my room. And I really try to use it very thoughtful and purposefully. And hopefully you have a better understanding of my thought process on how I integrate technology tools into my classroom. So thank you very much. And stay tuned for how students are using technology in my classroom.